and Coffee. I'm Stanley Smith, and this is Marcy Carmack, and we're here with Izzy and Tan Tanner. Tanner. And uh, now, for those of you who have trouble uh, understanding what our guests are saying today, that is because they are from London, England, and they are they're speaking English. So Marcy and I will be here to help interpret. If anyone has a question about a language barrier, just keep that in mind. But I'm going to let uh, Marcy introduce our guests because she knows them a little better than I do. Thank you and welcome, everybody. Hi. Um, so I'm so happy to have this lovely, dynamic couple that is just going to be making, well, already is making a, a huge impact in the sustainability space. And they have a initiative they've been doing called the Kind Community. And I love their tagline, making sustainable attainable. And um, you support any company business or company that wants to be better with sustainability. Is that correct? That's, that's right. right. Yeah, that's been our mission, you know, to make the sustainable attainable, we to work with any business and anyone to achieve that and help them educate people around sustainability. So firstly, thanks guys for having us on. We're looking yeah, forward thank to- Thank you so much. And I'm flattered that you think I speak British, but I am Canadian, so. <laughs> 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 you have adopted a bit of my tone. Well, <laughs> be warned. We're from Chicago, so you might not understand half of what we're saying with our action oh, Midwestern. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yesterday we covered a lot of things, and I wouldn't mind touching on some of those. Um, I I could not between trying to run the the room, which isn't really that hard, but I guess it is for me. Um, well, what were I the got, topics you were interested in? I, I got some notes and one was a hundred billion. Now, was that, what was that? That was fashion? Right, okay, yes. Yeah. So we were talking about the, well, there's a hundred billion garments that are produced. hundred billion uh, garments, that's, that's right. Yeah, every single day. And then every, every minute a truckload is either insinuated or ends up in landfill. Yeah, and you went on to talk about that a little bit more. Can you expound on that? Um, I, it's just, it's sort of earth shattering, <laughs> one billion garments. Well, is, it the, is this at the end of their fashion life cycle or is it the surplus uh, inventory? What is it that's being incinerated? Okay, so that's, so the hundred billion is the amount of um, products that are produced okay so every year 100 billion new items of clothing are produced and while a truck full of clothing is either insinuated or sent to landfill every second <laughs> so let's it's crazy let's <laughs> it's um it's just that mind boggling totally insane yeah it yeah. is um so you know uh, yeah. It puts things into perspective um, when you kind of, yeah. Sorry, I, just really quickly, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Our dog is just eating our, this pillow. I'm just gonna no quickly- well, no it's worries. one last article to end up in the landfill. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or in this very time, you've got where a dog chews through the corner of your pillow and you have to, unfortunately, it, it <laughs> won't make anything else apart from maybe a handkerchief or you have to get rid of it. But yeah, we're going to try and calm the, the, the puppy down. But uh, yeah, I mean, thank, I guess it's, it's so, you do put things into perspective. There's only 8 billion people on the planet, yet we're, we're every year producing 100 billion items. Something's, yeah. something's wrong there. System is broken. Yeah. And it's been broken for a while. I mean, I guess I could do the math, but 8 million people and 100, mil, 100 billion items. So how many items is that for person? I mean, that would oh, be a lot of ten, items. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking over 10, 10, 12. Oh, if I'm good at maths, what's it? Yeah, I'll work that out later, but so million. then so what would over you- 10, Over 10 items per year, surplus, if every single person was given a brand new item every single year. So if I'm a consumer, if I'm buying more than my 10 items, I'm in a way I'm helping. Am I helping because I'm buying up some of the surplus? So how would you how would you advise or counsel a manufacturer? Like we had a we had a shoe a manufacturer here last week 
what would you advise as the best practices for design, production, and distribution, and recycling of items? Mm. Yeah, I think, put, to put it simply, like, we're going to continue to consume, like, especially in terms of retail. So my, back, my background is retail, and, and we know for a fact that people are going to continue to buy. But I think what we can influence is what you're buying. And then same thing with the people actually producing, um, you know, either that be garments or really anything. It's really um, looking at kind of your supply chain and seeing how can I make better decisions from, from you know, the supply chain. So anything through the materials, who you're employing, how you're employing them, um, how you're marketing um, your um, items as well and just trying to make a, a, a positive change so that at the end of its life cycle it could either be kind of reused repurposed or you know like what is the the end of the journey of the article you're producing I think to really kind of put that into mm -hmm. um, question I think mm -hmm. is really important now more than ever taking like very simple take into consideration the full life cycle of the garment don't just worry about getting it into the hands of the customer worry about how the customer is going to use it, how the customer can repair it, how the cu customer can repurpose it potentially, um, and, and how can that then item be returned back to nature. So a couple of tips I left um, the audience with yesterday was about, you know, potentially opt I would consider opting for or organic natural fibers rather than man-made synthetic materials, because if it comes from nature, it can be returned to nature. And how, how do, I mean, when I lived in San Francisco, there were a couple of shops that had organic cotton, but, you know, as far as the big designers or anyone else, how do we know whether it's organic? I mean, if it's cotton, certainly that's better than, than synthetic, but then I'm, I guess the hope is that they start saying it's organic cotton. Yeah, you've got to be led by, as a consumer, it's very difficult to actually really know. And that's one of the, the issues with the, the, the fashion and most supply chains is that there's not a lot of transparency. Um, I think where we've come to with food is that we now have food labeling. So we know the calories, the fats, the carbs, and what we really should be getting into, I believe that um, there are some brands that are taking strides towards this is effective labeling. So. Mm -hmm providing true transparency on the materials you're using, where it's come from, you know, maybe even going into a bit more depth on actually who made my, my garments. Uh, there was a move, you know, there was a, there was a, of um, people asking that question um, over the last number of years, of who made my garment and how well were they paid? How well were they treated? So I think effective labeling is a great step for brands to, um, to look at, to educate consumers. That's a great idea, the effect of labeling. That's something we can, I think I can suggest to people uh, when we talk to future designers and manufacturers. That's a great idea. It's a great marketing. Go, and well, go it certainly will forward. be going forward, yeah. Yeah, go, go you know, there's, there's effective labeling on basically the materials and that sort of things. Then you can combine that with some sustainability practices on water usage, consumption, or even like carb, carbon la labeling. So how much carbon emissions uh, could, or how much carbon does that product use and then a consumer can understand um, kind of the impact that that material that garment has and then there's also look at certification so who what certification bodies already exist um, so there's certain labeling there's the butterfly mark there's b corp certif certification that uh, brands are going for which is an independent body which actually certifies your sustainable practices Hmm. I didn't know that. Did you, were you aware of that, Marcy? No. So it's look for the butterfly logo and the, what was it, B, the B Stainable? B Corp. They're two, they're two, they're two, um, probate. So when you um, said that, you know, I mean, there is a B Corp. I mean, but now there's a B E E Corp is what you're saying. No, no. So B Corp. As in, <laughs> okay. <laughs> B Corp oh. is the company. So B Corp is a is a yeah is a company that provides its certification to yes. other brands, and they become B Corp certified. 
and they get a score um, based on numerous number of uh, questions that they, um, they have to answer throughout their team, their supply chain, their materials and Right now, that but B Corp isn't just sustainable about sustainability, isn't B Corp larger than that? No, I, I it's it's specifically for sustainability. They they look at sustainability in a holistic manner, so they look at people and planet. You to be a B Corp, you have to actually uh, legally change your articles of association to put profit on a level playing field with people and planet. Oh, so it's a designation, like a S Corp or a LLC. Wow. You, you can become an, you, an LLC can become a B Corp. Interesting. Like, well, that's fascinating. I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really cool. There's about, I think there's about 5, 000, nearly 5,000 companies globally. So it's still a small community, but it's growing. Hmm. Okay. And that's actually something I read about on your website, that you're helping your clients um, to make them, or, you know, to help them be on a level playing field with profitable, with profit. Just, just out of curiosity, we had a show on Vivian Westwood. Is she, is she a B Corp by any chance? I don't is think so. Well, no, you better call her and get her signed up because she was all over the idea of sustainability. You know, and to be honest, many um, fashion brands are becoming, I think, more aware of the impact and also what consumers want. And I think now more than ever, we see that consumers want to kind of vote with their dollars and vote um, and pay for brands that align with their values. So we are seeing a lot of movement in the sustainability space and retail specifically. Um, you know, there's certain brands that I admire that are really, um, you know, have clear message about what they're doing and how they're doing it. And um, one brand in particular, I think Marcia mentioned to you um, before was Ghani um, on their website. What I love is that they just call it as it is and say, you know, this is the elephant in the room, you know, that we're trying to tackle. We're struggling, you know, maybe we're struggling or we're finding challenges in this area, um, but they call it out. And I think more than ever, customers are really appreciating the transparency um, and understanding that sustainability is a journey. Nobody is going to get it 100% right. Um, but being clear in your message and how you're kind of bringing your customer on that journey with you and also maybe giving them the opportunity to co-create with you um, on that journey, I think is really important. So Ghani is a really great company to, to look at in terms of a great example of how they're communicating their sustainability journey. And is that a fashion house or uh, yes. accessories? Oh. Designer. Yeah, it's, it's a designer. Um, it's French, right? No, I think it's um Italian. No, it's Nordic. I think from Copenhagen. I think. Honestly, don't quote me. I think. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, I was thinking. Yeah, I bought a sweater in Paris when I was there last. Ah. Uh, Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the good old days. <laughs> well, since you're involved in the sustainability topic, uh, you know, and all across all industries, Marcy did, uh, and we think we discussed earlier that fashion is the number one, you know, I guess is polluter the word we want to use? I don't know. Two. Number two. Number two. So, but as far as the industries you work with, is fashion a leader in sustainability or, or are they lagging behind? What would you say? It's a tough like, well, what is the, you what, can say they're what, like, what we're lagging behind. <laughs> they, they probably want to be, you know, diplomatic. Lagging, not leggings, Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, what industry are do you feel is the most, uh, you know, dedicated to this? Like what kind of solicit, what kind of, uh, request do you get from what industry is the one that is always knocking in your door asking for your assistance? Oh, that is, I think sustainability is a space that's continuously growing. It's the conversation of, it's on trend at the moment. You know, a lot of people are speaking about it. A lot of people are looking for answers, um, which we, we try to help as many people as possible in that space. I would say because fashion um, does have- It's a major contributor. Has a major yeah. contributor towards pollution and does has historic has been you know has historic legacy systems in place um that tends to come to the forefront equally so does food so as yes. another food system did you know you know around 30 percent of all food 
produced is wasted before it even reaches the the um, stores. And then from there, every every one in three bags that you buy at the store is also wasted. So there's there's another. Uh, large contributor or system that is broken and that needs a lot of attention to make it more sustainable so yeah i mean it's so, i shouldn't say simple but it's relatively simple to start composting i do it i mean i know it's difficult in cities but um that would certainly help i mean because then you have fertilizer and it, you know you wouldn't you wouldn't ha have all this waste it wouldn't be waste, it would be fertilizer. Yeah. Well, that's, I can say that, I guess, I, I don't want to sound challenging or offend anyone in this fashion space, but so, so is the answer to the impact of fashion. You just buy less stuff, less make less stuff, sell less stuff, and that will mean less pollution, less waste, less resource use. But, you know, we're in this, we're in the mindset at the moment in a movement where you have, to, you know, we're, we're kind we're of- We're gaslit. Bought, we're gaslit yeah. and we're bought into buying the next trend. You know what's 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 on trend what's what's uh, just around the corner and unfortunately the systems in places where manufacturers and brands are trying to predict and um, kind of forecast what is going to be in trend in 18 months to two, two years down the line they're already the two seasons ahead of what's in the stores um, and coming back to one of your original questions how what, what would be some advice to a, a designer or a manufacturer it would be perhaps make manufacture to order that would be a very e simple step you you're only manufacturing what you've already sold you've got customer demand you're, you're you're connecting with your consumer you understand what they want and you you take the order and then you make it for them that would be a wonderful way of um mitigating a lot of this wastage because the brands right now are trying to predict what a trend is in two years time what are people going to buy off the shelves and then they're then forced into advertising and marketing campaigns to sell those garments that are on the shelves or in the warehouses, which is a huge amount of effort and, and marketing spend and investment further into this. Into Crazy this broken system. Yeah, but you know, I, you know, it's been based on legacy systems. And I think we're in a, we're in a very exciting time now where people, um, brands are listening, we're open. And that's why the sustainability space is growing is because people are having this conversation. We know it's broken. What can we do to fix it? Right. It seems to me, I mean, you guys are much younger than we are. Um, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, there weren't so many trends. You know, it, was, it just wasn't, you know, just churning through all these trends. <laughs> it just wasn't like that. Well, Marcy, so, Marcy always says, you don't want to follow the trends, you want to follow the style. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that, there you so go. And you you can use that one in your sustainability marketing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you trademark it, Marcy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that's always been my, um, it's always been my thing. And I've always bought very little things and I've, I've kept them. Yeah. I've, I think people just don't see any value in that. Mm. Um, or yeah, I have, well. I, like, I have okay. blazers that I bought. Maybe I told you this before, but I have blazers. No, that I didn't buy. I got from a designer that I worked for in New York that are 30 years old and they're still nice. Yeah. 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 You know, as you say, many years ago, we would, we would be considerate about what we purchased. We'd really spend the time to invest in, you know, quality, quality, the, how it was made it was usually made through more natural materials more time was spent in the quality of the garment to last a long time and in the trend of kind of uh, planned obsolescence and on demand this always on digital world we've be, we've come become consumed with um i want something now i wanted something yesterday give it to me now like i want a one hour delivery slot everything's on demand at the palm of my hand i can get the world if i wanted to and amazon I mean, has a lot of lot to do with that i know i didn't want to yeah. say that but it's the first thing that popped in my mind i thought oh it's that damn amazon truck like showing up at a drop of a hat that's so yeah. so they they've, they've now um built that kind of demand into us we've made it they've made it so easy they don't you know as a consumer i can just click a button and i have something arrive in a number of hours i, I didn't mm -hmm. have to worry about all the 
machines and people and system that happens behind the screen. And I think what we, what I'd love, what we are trying to create here at Kind Community is making sustainability that easy, that accessible where, yes, you did click a button, but oh, guess what? It's a sustainable garment that is built to be returned uh, to the brand to be made into something else. And when that end of use is done, it gets replanted. We plant trees, we offset the carbon resource and our people are, are paid well and they enjoy working for us. That is sustainable. Yeah, and also to collaborate with everyone in the community. So we really believe that collaboration um, creates community. Um, so we really love to kind of amplify the voices of people doing good for the planet because as you, um, as we mentioned in the conversation yesterday with Fashion, I think there's a challenge with getting um, these people to collaborate together. Um, oh, right, the big name designers. Big name designers to collaborate. And I think it's really important now more than ever to kind of, you know, the climate crisis is not gonna be resolved by just one person. You know, it needs to, it needs to be kind of a collaborative effort of diverse voices, diverse experiences um, from people from different industries um, coming together um, to solve to solve the crisis or to, to work against it. Um, but echoing Janner's um, thoughts around kind of being gaslit and, and technology contributing to that as well, I think there's also on the flip side a positive to that because it really empowers um, us to call I think not maybe not call people out in a bad way because there is like that cancel culture which is like we may not want to you into. talked about the I didn't catch that yesterday yeah cancel culture so there's there's a lot of brands at the um not brands maybe they'll call themselves brands but uh have you heard of like diet Prada yes yeah, so one of our viewers she mentions diet Prada yeah and have they been censored great it's a it's an Instagram account but it holds brands accountable for their actions um Calls them out. And it calls them out, essentially. But so I think I thought it was side, mainly so. for like copiers, you know, it was calling out copiers, yeah, but they're doing more copiers, now. Copiers, but also like, you know, harassment claims, so which sure. is also really touchy, but it's um, <laughs> all the way to sustainability and greenwashing, you know. So it's, it's interesting because I think now with um, wanting things right away, you also get information right away. And that's um, kind of a, an interesting dichotomy because... Yeah, I think youth are really feeling empowered to call not only, you know, um, fashion houses out, but governments as well around policies. And, you know, we're seeing more and more, um, yeah. you know. Just as, just how easy it is to do bad, you, it's, it's just as easy now to do good with, with that platform, that channel. If but you, do, if you choose line. to, yeah. if you know what to do, if, you, if you're guided in the right way. Well, Diet Prada, that was not cancelled, was it? Um, oh, no, they weren't. A cancel culture, I'm not really sure what the definition is of it, but they kind of kind of take part in that in a way that they can call a brand out and right away that brand will oh, go. And know, they, so they boycott, um, they, they organize I see. boycotting or and movements. It's, it's, in the case of Diet Prada, they've got such a following that it could really just wipe out a company that do wasn't right. doing yeah. the right thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's why, I mean, we're really... Um, uh, conscious around storytelling and we really like to frame our marketing around storytelling to ensure that our brands are connecting with the right consumer um, and there is definitely a fine line between being ambitious with your sustainability goals and saying this is what I want to achieve and also um, kind of that fine line around greenwashing as well so what do you want to achieve but being clear on how you're going to get there um, and, and being honest in, with where you are now um, I think that's really important for brands to take into consideration. It's just kind of that transparency with their customer because it's so easy to, to really understand and get under that message and, and see what is actually happening. Um, and is this truth? Is this truthful? Are you saying brainwashing or greenwashing? Greenwashing. Green, green, the word green. Yes. yes. Greenwashing. Oh, I've never heard that. I've never heard the term. But so who is being greenwashed? The, the client, the manufacturer or the customer or both? Typically a brand. So basically brand saying, oh, we're, um, I don't know, give an example, like. Okay, so it would be, for example, a chocolate brand will say, we're, we, we sell a sustainable chocolate, right? And then they, they market all these premises saying, 
go go buy our new ethical sustainable chocolate and actually when and consumers go and buy they they see the advert they go and buy it they believe they're buying an, an ethical uh, sustainable chocolate and then uh, a piece of information will come up when actually there was still slave labor in the chocolate industry and actually the work the plastic isn't a sustainable wrapper it's uh it's not at all but they just marketed it as or it could be as simple as a brand okay, so it's, it's saying, like fraud it's like fraud that's it's it's it's, it's i mean I, oh, we can't say fraud i forgot about that yeah but. i mean it's it's <laughs> advertising yeah it's it's essentially advertising and messaging and communications that come from a brand to help sell their product so it could be as simple some greenwashing is as simple as a a product having a, a brown and green label and it's saying eco when actually all they did was put those colors on it to make it look as if it was so in, right in, so there are a lot of companies that are doing this. well a lot of companies the company that comes to my mind is is volkswagen right like that was the example of a major misrepresentation mm. yes exactly i don't know that story but We'll go on. We'll, to talk, we'll talk about it at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's for car coffee hour. Yeah. Car talk. <laughs> I don't have a car. Um. So what else did we talk about yesterday? We talked about Stella McCartney a bit, and then you kind of talked about a step-by-step -step process um, that people can go through to be sustainable or get at least get started. Yeah, that's a good topic. Like if I wanted to be, or Marcy and I wanted to be really conscious of that, like Marcy and I visited the Primark store, which is a new store here in Chicago from Ireland. And, you know, Marcy had a, like a visceral negative reaction because she didn't think shopping there was supporting sustainable initiatives. So what would be, what would be good practices? That's a great question. Okay, so I think yesterday, yesterday like the, in terms of like the step-by-step -step process for someone that wanted to live more sustainably or at least give it a good crack would be firstly the mindset change. Understand that it is possible and, and that there are sustainable options out there um, and that you do have a part to play in this bigger picture of, of taking climate action and playing your part in um, climate crisis. So mindset change then it's about actions like what do you do on a daily basis and how can you change those behaviors to more sustainable alternatives um let's look at food first like big one that a lot of people talk about is eating less red meat eating less seafood and uh, those two um changes will make a significant um positive impact because those two industries use a lot of um, resources. They also emit a lot of carbon, carbon emissions and they also destroy um, a lot of biodiversity in the planet. So those are the two big decisions. If someone was to limit the amount of red meat they eat and fish food, that'd be a big one. Then fashion, um, you would look at what, let's look at brands that align with my values. Uh, again, look at buying natural materials rather than synthetic ones. But also, but first of all, do ask yourself a question: Do I really need this? Because the most sustainable garment is the one that's already hanging in your closet. So, try to be a bit more conscious in your buying decisions and your buying habits. Say you did need something, you wanted to have a new outfit for going back to the office when things open back up after lockdown. You would, you know, let's perhaps not buy something new. Look at borrowing from a friend or a family family member. Look at if there's rental platforms. Can, can I can I actually go to yeah resell or thrift thrifting as you guys call it? Um, that would be a good first step before going to try and buy something off the shelf, off the rack, with a label on. I would I would go secondhand first, or rental, and then if it was a decision, it'd be natural materials. I mean. Just to want to echo that, but also maybe simplify it, like and how it worked for me, because I was feeling quite overwhelmed actually when I started my sustainable journey, and then almost felt like, okay, this is all just too much. Um, but what has helped me, and it was um, advice from a friend who said, well, if you look at your house 
just try to tackle one room at a time. So if you look in your bathroom and you, and you say to yourself, okay, what in my bathroom can I swap to a sustainable alternative? So everything from your toothbrush to your um, toilet paper, to your shampoos, like you just tackle the bathroom. Then you look at your office and, you know, and you think, okay, how can I, um, what can I change or what alternatives can I use in my office? And then you kind of work up your way to the kitchen and then you look at your food and you look at kind of your energy consumption. So if you just tackle it in small steps, I think it's just a lot easier um, for, in your journey. Um, but also realizing that it is a journey and it's not kind of an overnight thing. And also that we are privileged to be able to kind of find these alternatives um, because some people just are in a space where they can um, choose to be more sustainable. So I think it's really important to, you know, it's so easy, especially for businesses to point fingers, you know, at the government saying we're not going to change until policy changes or government saying, well, we're not going to change until consumer demand the change and you know vice versa so I think we just need to take accountability for ourselves and try and support people as much as we can on on their journey yeah and the Dalai Lama said if you think you're too small to make a difference try sleeping with a mosquito <laughs> <laughs> so those small basic those small changes compounded up over millions of people over the world does make a difference because I think it's going to take some time to, I don't know, the, the American woman wants new clothes. It's going to take some time for her to scale it back. But also, is he brought up a good point that, that yeah, people at the lower end of the economic spectrum, they probably have less opportunities to be. Yeah. Like, you know, when you said for well, example, yeah. I was like, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is like some people don't have any option but primary. You know, so if you're more, um, I mean, if you're concerned about getting food on the table for your kids, you're not going to care about if the shirt, you know, that you're wearing is organic cotton, you know, so you, there's different priorities. So I think we need to really reestablish like, you know, and that, that's why we kind, we called ourselves kind community because it's really all about kindness. If you want to simplify sustainability, it's just being kind um, to one another and being um, supportive. Um, so and kind to yeah. yourself. Yeah, exactly. Kind to yourself. Kind to what, yeah, what you're putting on your body, what you're putting in your body, and that only when you start doing that, you can, you know, support others. Um, but I don't know, Jana explains this better than I do in terms of where we came up with the name, but hopefully that kind of gives a little bit of an explanation. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I'm really curious. I can't seem to, I'm curious about, are you, do, are you guys vegetarians or vegans? We're vegan. You're both vegan. Yeah. That's awesome. Maybe you told me that when I spoke to you before, but that's that's really awesome. So, I mean, I, I wanted to just caveat that. So prior to be, becoming, uh, eating a vegan diet, you know, I've, I've, I have, I do have, still have leather shoes that I purchased many years ago when I was buying stuff. I do have a, a leather bag that I've had for over 10 years. So, so although I eat a vegan diet i'm not a true vegan in that sense because i still have animal products that i purchased when i wasn't a vegan when i when i wasn't necessarily that aware of my impact you know i you know i didn't walk around per i'm not perfect and not anyone not everyone is and that's that's the thing it's a journey and if you <laughs> but Jenner is still can, sustainable to have leather pieces for a long time you you told us that the natural things are going to go back into the earth so I don't think you should feel bad about that. Well, there, there is I, I want to, the reason I say that is that a lot. What may, some people have done and I've seen is that right. Okay, yeah, I'm changing my. They go all in and they go right. I'm a vegan. They get rid of all their leather stuff. They they just they destroy it or they get rid of it. And that, in a sense, wasn't sustainable. Um, so you know, I think you've got to take it into consideration, and that's. Um, the, the, the thing is here is have you know if you just choose to do one thing as as Izzy said choose to go for one thing make that tick that off feel good about it and then decide to take the next thing on so in time you'll be in a much better place than you was a week ago a year ago and that is how things become collectively and it will be in a better uh, position than we are today like if you give up leather because you're vegan or whatever you 
then you have to buy something synthetic for your your bag or you don't have to, I guess they're coming up with some mushroom um, alternatives. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that'll either be pretty expensive or hard to get for a while. Sure. Well, they yeah, are. The they are. are out there. there are. Solu the solutions exist. There's, there's been Pinatex, which is from a brand called Anas Anasanam, which is basically pineapple leather. So they take, yeah, they take that. But what, what they also have is they treat it with a bioplastic. So it's water repellent and lasts longer, right? So again, in that sense, it's not truly sustainable. Same with leathers. There's, there's a lot of um, chemicals and, and water usage that is used in the yes. supply chain leathers. So that's, again, is, some people say it's a byproduct of the meat and, and dairy industry. So um, what would have been waste is now put into fashion. Um, so there, there is going to become a tipping point where because less of us are, cons are buying brand new leather items, then there's less of a demand on that industry. Um, but there are solutions out there for you to, to make more sustainable decisions. Interesting. Izzy, back to the fashion. Any other brands that we should make note of that we should look, uh, tell our viewers to look, look at? Do you think are leaders that are high fashion and things that appeal to you that are also sustainable? I mean, there's so many. Um, I think Ghani is definitely a favorite. Pangaea um, as well. And they're Pangaea? quite Pangaea. Spell that. P-A-N-G-A-I. A. -I. A. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love a brand called Sporty and Rich. They're American, um, but what they do is they do kind of release drops. So there's a lot of hype around them, but they don't do any surplus stock, so which is great. Um, similarly, there's House of Sunny, which is an East London brand. Um, I mean, there's so many. Actually, what is helpful is, is, is in terms of labeling, I'm gonna plug Selfridges really quick, but Selfridges are labeling. Um, <laughs> we so love Selfridges. I do. <laughs> oh, great. So do <laughs> I. Um, but we launched, or Selfridges launched Project um, Earth last year. Um, so they have really ambitious targets, sustainability targets um, that they've set and also are starting to label the sustainable um, brands. Um, online and in store for different purposes. So either that be because um, they're using less water usage or, um, you know, it's certain cotton that's sustainable. Um, they're quite clear on, on why they've labeled it a sustainable brand. So it's, a, it's, it's really interesting. And I would suggest anybody who is keen to learn more about sustainable brands to check out the Selfridges website. We'll, we'll definitely do that. Izzy, are you the young, young person that is working at Selfridges? Is that right? Okay. Yes, I remember I Marcy talking to somebody earlier in the season and she mentioned Selfridges and I said, well, we need to ask her to send, open a Selfridges store here or a Holt Renfrew, right? You are associated yeah. with Holt Renfrew, right? I originally worked at Holt Renfrew. Yeah, I, I contacted Holt Renfrew in January and asked them if they could please open a store here in Chicago because we we really need something big and dynamic to happen here. And I'm, I'm serious about that. <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> great, great, great store. So we'll, we'll talk about that offline. It has a, it has a Chicago connection. Mm. Mr. Selfridge worked for Marshall Field here in Chicago. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I did know that. Um, yeah, we'll definitely have to take it offline. <laughs> <laughs> How many more? You have a, just a couple more months until you're... Yeah. A couple, yeah, a couple more weeks, actually, until I go full-time into Khan community. Um, so... Oh, I, I thought you were going to say you were having a baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can only they see you. I can only see you. Just got that, would, that would be sustainable. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, we just have a puppy, and I think that will keep us busy for <laughs> many years. And especially with kind community, it's been it's going to be really busy. But I'm really uh, excited to come in full time and support um, the brands that we have in our digital agency and support kind community grow as as a whole. So, yeah, very excited for that. Well, that's terrific. You know, let, let us, Marcy and I know, because we have a lot of contacts here really all over the place and um, it does come up a lot. People are interested in this topic. So uh, we should probably talk about that some more. If there's any contacts here you might want to connect with. Yeah, absolutely. For your business. 
Yeah, absolutely. That would be great. Um, you know, we're really open to just have conversations with people doing great things um, for people and planet. Um, we do have a digital agency called Kind Co Studios, um, where we help sustainable brands um, from really the beginning stages grow. Yeah, and it's awesome. Uh, more conscious consumers. So that's everything from social media to paid ads um, through honing in on their messaging. Um, and the strategy of that as well. Um, really all encompassing in terms of growth. Whatever you need for growth, we we have you in the in the Kindco Studio mm -hmm. section. Um, and then Jen, do you want to talk about the investments? At the... Yeah, because at the moment growth costs money, we also help businesses raise finance from the right investors, impact investors that want to invest uh, in the purpose of the sustainable startups. Phenomenal. I mean, that's... Guys... Go ahead. Go ahead. I say that's really a phenomenal resource. We're going to make a note of that and share that because this topic is is a lot of interest, but it's very elusive. Like people have a hard time. Well, like Zizi said, Zizi said when she first started to be sustainable, she was overwhelmed. So it's really great to have a resource because everyone's trying to get their, a handle on this. And it sounds like you guys already have the handle on it for people. That's terrific. Yeah, I guess I was just kind of curious if you you have any staff or they're all freelancers. I mean, you mm -hmm. do a lot of things, so... Yeah, we have a wonderful team um, of people who are kind of really good at what they do in their own right. So yeah. everything from um, tech to um, communications to, to social media uh, management and community management. So we do have a good team of, of people that we have to credit as yeah. well. We couldn't do it on our own. No, no way. Um, no way. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with taking all the credit. That's Marcy and I's favorite. <laughs> but I am going to also, I'm going to challenge Marcy um, to put together a vegan wardrobe <laughs> for us, see if she can come up with some, some great looks that are vegan for us. Yeah, I mean, but then, I don't know, there's, I, I'm the doubting whatever it is. Um, <laughs> um, like these shoes that I have loved and run into the ground are you know they're they're um, faux leather so they're vegan but they're not good so you know, what are you going to do with them after marcy i mean <laughs> i can donate them to the church i really can't donate no one will take them they're like they're run down yeah. What were you going to say? Make a, you can make it a planter. You could put a plant in there. <laughs> <laughs> I've, done, I've done stuff like that. I'm a gardener. I've done all kinds of crazy stuff with everything. He's there crazy. You <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, what you've done great there is actually wear them, use them to their... The you can't be worn yeah. anymore. You've probably re repaired them already in the past and gotten a few more wears out of them. That's what we, that's what we need more of, right? There is... You can only wear something for as long as it's going to do the job for. Um, and then, you know, whatever you can do after that, can it be turned into something else? Great, wonderful. And, or can it be, re uh, you know, repurposed? That's well, great. Well, I think a lot of tennis do. shoes are made into that playground rock, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. And, and what, what we've, you know, bought into is, is having 50, 60, 70 pairs of shoes one for each event that maybe I wore once four years ago and I may get around mm -hmm. to wearing them again on that event that I'm going to when someone gets married, you know? I think we've got to get to a my, maybe shift a mindset of um, if I do own it, maybe put it into the resale market so others can, can, um, can use it and benefit from it that couldn't maybe have afforded the pair when they were brand new. And that is, the, is using the item. And more and more rather than gathering dust in a closet somewhere great tip well that was really interesting anything else marcy we have for um well he, it, janner does a podcast which is just to promote the community i suppose yeah um i so it's the kind community show which we're rebranding now so it's been, it's been on a hiatus um for maybe the next week or so but the whole purpose of it is to, to amplify the voices of, again, people doing great things for the planet and really getting their story out there. Um, and 
for anybody who's interested in learning about kind of different solutions or different brands. Sorry, this is my <laughs> um, I yeah. love Sharpay. <laughs> yeah, that's so Sharpay. Um, but yeah, you can tune in live or you can check our website out. Uh, all the episodes are hosted on our website so you can have a listen. So it's everyone from, you know, Joe Ruxton, um, who's behind the documentary Plastic Oceans, um, to, you know, even designers as well. Um, Loki, who we had on a couple of weeks ago, um, who are a sneaker brand actually that you may be interested in um, and what they're doing. So it's it's a wide range of topics and di from different people from different industries. So if you're interested in sustainability and learning more about the people behind um, great solutions, yeah, we, we, we'd love for you to check us out. That sounds like excellent content. I just want to buy better, buy less. Well, that's what I've been doing, Mike. I love oh, that. My. Yeah, buy better, buy less. <laughs> and, and Marcy, I'm sure you've got a, a, a catalog of great brands that you love, and you can sh you can share that with your friends, family, your audience here. And in doing so, you're giving that space for people to learn about them and buy into them. And that's great for that brand because they get uh, uh, more customers to buy into their great products that they've invested so much time into. Yeah. Um... I'm trying to think um, the real real is partnering with a lot of people and actually maybe one of um, I just can't remember. There's somebody big that's going to be selling used stuff in their regular stores. Have you heard of that? I thought Macy's was going to do that. No, I'm talking about, you know, Louis Vuitton or, you know, maybe, okay. but I think that is a, I think that's we a trend. And we've also heard about the rental too. We've heard of people being, you know, crazy people like the Gap. We heard the Gap and the, or the Banana Republic. Banana Republic has rental. And I, I, I don't even Lauren. understand that. Ralph Lauren also is launching a, um, like a 20, I think it's like 28 day rental, wardrobe rental. And it's like a membership scheme. So every 28 days, you essentially get a new wardrobe. Um, and then it's repurposed. So it's, it, I mean, there's so many different models coming out in the retail space. And again, don't call Selfridges, but hosting those models in our stores, like we have rental, we have resale, um, yeah, and repairs. Wow. There's so, so many, I mean, there's so many different what options. What percentage of the store is doing that? Oh, I don't, I, I don't want to quote what that is. I mean, um, approximately 25% or much less. Oh, I'm not sure. But Would we it... do have like Vestiaire. Um, we have Her Collective, which is a rental platform. We have a repair um, section <laughs> of the shop. So yeah, I, I, I wouldn't know in terms of percentage, but there's definitely some good options out there and online. I think that people can discover um, all the solutions are out there. You just need to do a little digging. What we're hoping to do is kind of make us the one-stop shop for you to be able to kind of come into the community, learn everything there needs to, to know so that you don't feel overwhelmed um, and get some really fun, great tips and get to kind of um, collaborate with people who are like-minded. Awesome. So where can I be part of the community on Facebook? We are pretty much on all channels, but the best way to connect with us is literally www.kind.community. The website. The website, so, yeah. Kind.community. Plug that in, you'll find us. Okay. okay. Well, we'll, we'll there are a lot of people that want to have kind in their, <laughs> in their name. Have you noticed that? Yeah, well, we love it. It's, you know, I think we've got to be kind. This is it. There's a reason why <laughs> we put... No lack of we can always have more kindness. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also if you sign up to our emails, every time you open an email, um, we plant a tree. So basically we're the, from what we know, the only climate positive um, agency. So um, we, we give back more than what we take. Um, and every time you open an email, we plant a tree. Also, if you follow us on Instagram, um, we're, we're quite active on Instagram as well. Terrific. Well, kind is a cosmically charged word because it, it implies responsibility. So it's, a, it's as opposed to being nice. So I applaud you on that front. And I, I thank you. I think Mercy wants to thank you too for yeah, thank you. sharing those tips and the website as a resource. We'll be sure to post it when we uh, 
let me post this video and we'll be discussing it in more detail tonight when we bring back our fashion panel. We'll look at the video that you guys just uh, participated in with us and we wanna thank you. And then again, we'll be back at 6 p.m. this evening, Central Standard Time for Fashion Coffee Hour. Everyone's invited. Please visit us on Facebook or on YouTube and we'll send you an invite. Thanks you guys so much. I'm so glad thank we crossed the, the language barrier. Yeah. That was excellent. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thanks. Thanks for sharing your platform. Have a good night. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>